Hello everyone, I'm Sylvia from Fela Taro. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to have a look at my top 10 tarot books. Now, although I do have a bit of a ranking system and I definitely have my favorites, um, I don't think I'm going to show you these books in any kind of system. Um, because uh, it depends on the level of your knowledge, it depends on how many of these you've read already, it depends on uh, what you want to focus on when you study for your tarot practice. Um, because even though they're all referring to tarot and not, not to any other divination system, so there won't be any book referring to Lenormand, for example, um, or, you know, runes, uh, these are specifically referring to tarot. It also depends on which of the divination methods that are explained in pretty much a lot of books um, is your jam. It depends on what you prefer, what you like best. And in my case, I think that I always uh, welcome and I always enjoy something new, something that I uh, don't know, something that really um, you know stimulates my intellect because it really brings me to um, that that thirst of knowledge that um, that I have and many of us have, let's face it, if we're interested in tarot, it's because we love to know stuff. We love to look at people and get to know them and get to know something about them that maybe they don't even know. It's about not just about divination. For me, divination is a very small, um, let's say, part of my practice. But the most important thing is to... Um, channel that kind of really powerful energy that can help me create a meaningful connection with others. And whenever I study a book, I always really enjoy those books that give me that possibility. So these tarot books are all, um, I would say, quite easy to buy, to find. I'm just quickly looking at them and because I don't want to say something wrong, but I think none of them is out of print. Um, what you can do, the, the beautiful thing about out-of-print books is that um, it, it's, not, it's not like tarot decks. So an out-of-print tarot decks is quite difficult to find sometimes and you have to know um, where to look for it. You have to go into eBay, for example, or Etsy or in one of those um, Facebook groups and ask if someone has it. Whereas when it comes to a tarot book, for example, even if it's out-of-print, chances are you can find it in a library which is um, amazing so but i think that they're all quite easy to find and many of them have been reprinted several times so let's have a look now first and foremost of course i am going to talk about rachel's books um, rachel was a very important part of my formation of my approach to tarot I will always be grateful to her for the way in which she shared her knowledge with the tarot community. And uh, the way in which she writes is also very, very interesting. It's very entertaining. Um, I've got to tell you, I, sometimes I read, um, I have read in the past tarot books that were not necessarily boring, but so very, let's say, overflowing with information that I thought, once or twice I thought that the author was actually missing the point um, because if you write something that is incredible uh, from the point of view of research of course but no one gets to read it because it's too dense it's too intense it's actually too difficult you're not spreading the message now are you so to me Rachel is the one example of writing to entertain as well as to impart wisdom and I think that this book is probably one of the most famous ones not just by Rachel but by any uh, writer that tried their hand on, um, on writing a tarot book. So 78 degrees of wisdom. Um, I think this is the new edition. Yeah it's the new edition. Um, I used to have the um, first edition as well but this is the newer one and to be honest I don't want to ruin the old editions so I just wanted to show you this one. Now um, I think we all know this book it's very very interesting it talks about each and every card with a bit of a um, description for the upright meaning and the reverse meaning. The cards that she's referring to are uh, taken from the RWS the classic the, the uh, original RWS system 
and therefore every kind of reference to symbols is relating to that deck. So I actually do recommend buying uh, just a simple IWS so to be able to follow all the details she, re she is referring to. But one thing that I wanted to say about this book that it's um, not necessarily well known is that if you actually purchase the audible version of this book, at the end of the book, uh, the reader, unfortunately the reader has not been read by Rachel, it has been read by uh, someone else. And this person at the end of the book actually um, interviews Rachel. So there's an interview with Rachel at the end of the audiobook. And it's a good length interview. Like I remember that the first time, I had no idea. And I finished the book and I um, I saw that there was an, another section. So I I played that last section and I was, I think I was outside, I was doing stuff. And, um, and I remember walking down the street and listening to this interview and reacting to it, emotionally reacting to it. And if you've never listened to any of Rachel's interviews, she is so much fun. Her sense of humor, it's just, it's so witty. She is so smart and intelligent and deep. And she was telling stories and... Um, they were not pertaining to the book, so obviously the uh, the book was a bit of a um, you know initial question. So how did you get to uh, write this book and everything? But then she literally went on talking about her life and experiences and everything, uh, real life examples of when she was reading cards for clients, and um, it was so very entertaining. I was laughing out loud, and there were just people looking at me really hard, like what was I doing? Um, but it's absolutely a must. If you enjoyed this book, I do recommend get yourself the Audible uh, version because there is this interview at the end and it's just absolutely fantastic. Now, the second book that I wanted to talk to you about is Always by Rachel. Uh, this one is not as famous as the 78 Degrees of Wisdom, although being by Rachel is still quite famous. And it's the Tarot Wisdom, Spiritual Teachings and Deeper Meanings. I think that this is probably um, targeting a not, a, let's say, not a beginner's uh, kind of audience. It's more for a, uh, let's say, an intermediate, an intermediate kind of audience. Even though there's um, there's stuff that you know you need to know even when you're a beginner. So I, I don't really, um, it's difficult for me to make a distinction between beginners and intermediate and advanced. Um, because, uh, to be honest, my way of learning tarot was a bit all over the place, and it was so many years ago, um, that it's actually difficult for, for me to remember what stages I went uh, through, um, and what did I learn first. I, I, I honestly do not remember. We're talking about 35 years ago. Um, <laughs> so, um, I do know this, that um, um, this book resonated with me, even more than the 78 degrees with of wisdom this book is i think it's very very interesting when you want to know a bit more so whether you consider yourself already at an intermediate level i do recommend this book because it does go into a, um, a let's say a deeper level of symbology of the cards um, it also as you can see it's um it's really um also expanding the knowledge to other systems that are still related to tarot. For example, we've got this, um, the tree of life. Um, you know, it, it's always something that um, when you study uh, tarot, you have to be able to um, have a knowledge, have a certain knowledge, and the level of the knowledge depends on you, but it's extremely important that you know something about numerology, that you know something about Kabbalah, that you know something about astrology, and so on and so forth. Um, I, it's obviously, it depends on you uh, whether you want to deepen that knowledge in those other disciplines. Um, what I do believe is that uh, you do need the basics, um, and it, that is just my opinion, and you, you may disagree, and, and, and you'll be right, and, and I, I'm not saying that what I say is correct, Is this is the way um, that I read tarot, I, I love knowledge, I love studying, so in my case, it's a matter of, you know, being <laughs> really entertained by studying different methods, 
this book will give you that sense of joy, uh, that sense of connecting to several different disciplines in order to be able to understand tarot even more. Um, it will give you the possibility to have a look at different layers of the meanings. Of course, you don't need to study this book to read tarot. You can read tarot uh, with a basic knowledge. I've seen people reading tarot with no knowledge at all of the RWS system, for example, claiming that they read cards intuitively. And I have no reason to dispute that other than to me, um, it wouldn't work for me. Okay, so it's it's personal. I need to have that kind of knowledge first. And then, of course, I will tap into my own intuition to just read the cards. And sometimes I also use intuition to uh, possibly override uh, the kind of knowledge that comes, to, that, that comes after knowing uh, the RWS system. Because if my intuition tells me something that is not necessarily being written, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that it's not true. So I do like using intuition, absolutely. But what I do recommend to anyone who's um, starting or who's already started a few years ago is to feel confident enough in knowing the system for all of the cards. And then, you know, and then you'll feel like you can use your intuition as well. Now, this book um, will, let's say, will help you if you're at that level. And it's, it's, it's really interesting. It's really beautiful. As you can see, um, it's very visual as well. I would have loved for these images to be in color and not in black and white, which is a bit of a pity, but you know, um, I think it's, it's obviously not Rachel's choice. It's just the way in which this book was printed. Um, but it is incredibly interesting. So, and I don't think everyone knows about this book. So it's called Tarot Wisdom, Spiritual Teachings and Deeper Meanings. Now, another book that I definitely recommend uh, when you want to have a, a kind of an in-depth uh, knowledge of um, tarot reading. And I really love the fact that it actually says that in the, in the title. So this is Advanced Tarot, an in-depth guide to practical and intuitive tarot reading. And this is by Paul Fenton Smith. Now, Paul is a fellow Australian. I think he was actually born in Adelaide. He may have moved uh, during his life and he, it's really funny because reading this book, he actually gives you a bit of an idea of how he started reading tarot, his approach um, to uh, divination. And actually at the very beginning, he was a palm reader. And so I think that the story goes that he found a job as a palm reader in a shopping mall. And, um, and it was in the same place where there was also tarot reader. But what happened was that one day, so and, and he kept on, you know, um, talking with this tarot reader and this tarot reader was explaining all the meanings of the cards and um, they had really long conversations and it, this went on for months. And then one day, I think what happened was that the tarot reader was either sick or, you know, he had something and he just couldn't go to work. And, but there, there were clients showing up. And then the owner of that space just went to Paul and said, well, why don't you try? You know, why don't you try and read tarot for, for these clients? And that's how he um, started reading. This book is really, really deep. I absolutely love it. Um, what I, it is similar to other books that go in depth. And I'm thinking about Susan Chang's book. Um, and I will show you later. She wrote, I uh, think, three books in total. I have one of them and I'll show you. What I do think that it's kind of different, uh, it sets this book apart from other in-depth kind of books about tarot, is that um, it, Paul shows a very unique way of reading reversals. Okay, so basically... Um, if you watch my channel, you know that um, uh, to me, reversals, it's, it's like a completely different world. You have at least five or six ways to read reversals. But even defining that is completely wrong because I think that reversals are... Uh, there you go. So when you talk about using intuition to read, to read cards, to read tarot, to me, you have to use your intuition to read reversals. Not necessarily uh, for the meanings because there are um, very 
let's say, set meanings to reversals, but in order to understand which method you need to choose to read that particular reversal for that particular card in that particular position. And the reason why I think that it's probably when it comes, if you would ask me what's the most difficult thing about reading tarot, it it's not necessarily memorizing all the meanings because after so many years, it, it's impossible not to memorize them, honestly. It, they just stick to you. <laughs> it's also because you see the meanings in the cards. Um, but it's the um, knowing what methods to choose when you have a, re a reversal card, a reversed card. Now, Paul is talking about a very interesting way to read reversals. So basically, he says that every time you have a reversal, this is the way in which he teaches you how to read them. Basically, you look at the card, if it's the Seven of Swords reversed, you look at the card which is preceding this one, so the Six of Swords, in the upright position, and you read it as if it was a negation of that card, as if that card had not been um, allowed to fulfill its meaning. So, for example, the Six of Swords upright is that kind of, um, it's the kind of movement, it's the kind of uh, journey you embark upon, um, to go to a better place. You come from a place of pain, you come from uh, something that has been broken. It's a situation that has been, um, you know, so hard to deal with that you finally understand that you have to leave, you have to move away from it. It's not necessarily a journey you are happy to embark upon. And in some, so the traditional depiction is that you're not alone in that boat. Um, there is someone with you. But in many other um, decks, you're on your own. Because I actually like it when the figure is by themselves. Because it kind of gives you the idea of the pain. Um, you're not only leaving something difficult behind, but you're also on your own and you're facing a future which is very much unknown at this point. Because you're still traveling, you're still moving towards it. Um, and you're not necessarily, it, it wasn't a happy choice, the one you made. It was a necessary one. It was a painful one. But I like the fact that this is a transition. So this transition has its meaning fulfilled with the, the Six of Swords. If you, rever if you pull a Seven of Swords reversed, you have to look at that Six of Swords in such a way that it tells you that that transition has not happened. So you probably tried to get away from a difficult situation, but it has, no, it has not happened or it didn't work. For some reason, you had to go back. For some reason, figuratively, that boat sank and therefore you could not reach the, the, better, um, the better shore, the, the better place. And therefore, you're kind of forced to leave the old life you, you wanted so much to leave behind you're forced to go back to something that knows you, that you know. You're forced to go back to the betrayal, the deceit that was there. So it's a seven of swords reversed, meaning that you're necessarily going even deeper in that, in that meaning of betrayal. Because you did try to get away, to step away from it, but you couldn't. It was denied to you. You had your possibility to redeem yourself, brought upon by the Six of Swords that has been denied. So it invites you to just, you know, retrench perhaps a bit and then take another trip and take another journey and once again set sail and trying to abandon that, that situation which is really toxic for yourself. This is the way in which um, basically um, Paul is suggesting reading reversals and you can do that for each and every card. Just to give an example, another example, the Three of Cups reversed. So the Three of Cups reversed reveals a lack of support from the community. The person is being ignored. All other people are simply too busy with their own goals and problems to notice there is a need for more assistance. The Three of Cups reversed is the other kind of Christmas celebration where the family gathers together to finish last year's ongoing argument. After a few alcoholic beverages, opinions are stated candidly and fueled by a few more drinks. The entire festivity resembles a pub, a wild pub at closing time. It is time to return to the previous card. 
the upright tour cups and to find the person who shares similar views to enjoy some time with this individual while staying out of the line of fire. See what I mean? This is the way in which it tells you how to not, not just read a reversal, but also find an, a possible outcome or a resolution to that reversal. So this is definitely one of the reasons why I recommend uh, this book. It's one of the reasons why there's so much more uh, that goes into this book that obviously, as you can see, it's massive. I think it's got 600 pages or something like that. So obviously there's a lot more than that. Um, but it goes so much into depth. And as I said before, what sets it apart from other books um, is definitely this really interesting way to look at reversals. Now, another book, and I just mentioned it earlier, is by uh, T. Susan Chang. Now, um, Susan Chang is an absolute authority on tarot. Um, if you haven't heard of her, I highly recommend, you know, checking out her books. I think she wrote three. I only have one, but I want to, because it took me some time. This is not as, let's say her way of writing is not as entertaining as Rachel's or as Paul's way of writing. Therefore, it does require a certain effort from, from you to be focused and, and, and understand what you're reading, let's say. Um, in this case, the, the one that I have that I'm studying is actually Tarot Deciphered and Decoding Esoteric Symbolism in Modern Tarot. Now, this book is also a chunky monkey, as you can see. I think they're all being published by Llewellyn, at least this one is for sure. Um, it is incredibly, um, so it's going really, really deep when it comes to esoteric uh, symbolism. As you can see, it talks, uh, there are sections refer to the IWS symbolism, to the Thoth symbolism, and um, it, it does, let's say it does that for each and every card. Um, if you're doing the deck and walk, I, um, there's a lot of information that you can find about the decans. Um, in here as well. It, it also, as you can tell, it also gives you any kind of information you may miss or you may look for um, related to the cards. It's, it's just everything is, is right here. If you're looking for a book on symbols, esoteric symbolism in tarot, this is it. The, this honestly saved the money by buying 30 books, this is the one that you need to buy um, because you, it's got a lot on astrology, mythology, as you can tell, Kabbalah. It's, it's superb. It's absolutely interesting. And as I said, it does um, require a bit of application, a bit of focus. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, um, if you get to this level, um, you need focus, you need to focus, you need to study, you need to consider this as a study book. It's not just um, an entertainment kind of book, it's, it's definitely something that you need to apply yourself to study. Now, another one that I um, think is incredibly interesting, uh, but it's a lot easier, let's say, to um, to understand is by Ethan E. Dawn, Your Tarot Court. Um, read any deck with confidence. Um, I have to say, I have at least five, I think, well, probably four or five books on tarot courts, and uh, this is by far the best one. Um, it is, um, honestly, when you study tarot courts, is, um, you need to choose what to focus on because there's a lot of symbology and there's a lot of knowledge uh, to be studied on tarot courts as well. Um, so when you study numerology, for example, you will see that tarot courts have a very specific way to be interpreted. Um, but I think that if you choose to focus on archetypes when you when you read the tarot cards, this is the book for you, um, without um, without a shade of a doubt. Uh, the only thing that and it's just me, it's personal um, that I found a bit confusing about this book is that um, it has different sections. Um, for example, at the beginning, it gives you. Um, you know, okay, well, you uh, look at the knights. So the knights are daring, you have the keywords in a reading. So a big general, let's say, 
and then of course it goes uh, more into um, details talking about each and every night so you've got the knight of cups and um, you know it, it's very good because it gives you key sentences that it's easy to remember so it gives you a mantra for example that for the knight of cups is love is the highest power it describes obviously why this is the mantra for this particular card um, it gives you the meanings in the reading and uh, and then it goes to a um, another um, knight, knight of pentacles, knight of words, etc. But then there is a different section, and you know, and it goes back to the, for example, the same cards, so archetypes and the tower cords. So if you have, um, say, for example, the king of cups, so you've got keywords still which is some of them a bit, a bit of a repetition from the one we just seen. Then it talks a bit about astrology. It talks a bit about the archetype. And this is extremely interesting and very, very useful because if you memorize the archetypes, the names of the archetypes is very easy. There's just 16 of them. So, you know, if you memorize 78 card, you can memorize 16. Um, for the King of Cups, we see that it's the hate, it's the Lord of the subconscious of the underworld. And with this, you will know what the archetype is. So it's obviously it gives you the description. And then it has a section in love and relationship at work at career. Indicators that you are a king of cups. Um, what are the strengths? What are the weaknesses of the shadow side? And king of cups archetype in a tarot reading. If the King of Cups comes up in a position that requires an outcome action or the next step forward, consider these actions as suggestions to move into the archetype's power. So this is a much more, let's say, um, defined, much more details kind of section. And I would have preferred the first section where it just talks about the, you know, page of wands etc to be in the same section here so in in this case this would have been longer uh, it would have been more in details but everything would have been in the same place does it make sense because you whenever you study if you're doing like me that just i'm, I'm studying uh, archetype by archetype i go to three different um parts of the book in order to find um for example the king of cups and then there's the last um, part, let's say, after the exercise, which is quite interesting as well. Uh, tarot Court Love Connection. So again, we have King of Cups, the Hate, the Lord of the Underworld. And then he starts talking about much more in detail about uh, how this particular archetype behave um, in a relationship. Um, this is very interesting. Example of a perfect love connection, example of a troubled love connection and then he moves on to the next uh, tarot chord so in in i don't know for me this would have been so much useful if i had this part you know at the, at the end just as a tale of uh, the description in the central part of the uh, of the book i could have been studying all of these information um sequentially let's say but it doesn't matter i mean it's uh, it's always very interesting and then at the end there is a bit of a uh, very funny, interesting part, which is called Tarot Court Pop Culture Representations. And it just gives you a few ideas of, uh, you know, someone, um, a, a character from pop culture, so a celebrity perhaps that um, everyone knows about, uh, to just give you um, a bit of a um, help, you know, in remembering who we're talking about and what their characteristics are from their personality. Um, when we talk about very specific uh, tarot cords, for example, the Queen of Swords, um, it's Cersei Lannister or Miranda Hobbs from Sex and the City. So obviously, well, it obviously depends whether you've been watching Game of Thrones and Sex and the City, uh, but it also gives you the possibility of filling in your personal picks for the judge in the pop culture. So obviously, if you haven't watched any of these shows, but you do have someone that reminds you of the Queen of Swords, then you just write it down and it'd be very easy for you to remember who you're talking about when you're talking about a Queen of Cups. As I said, this is absolutely fantastic for studying the tarot court. Another book that I used a lot and I studied a lot and I found absolutely fantastic 
was when I was uh, trying to get a stronger grip on um, interactions between cards. Um, so uh, finding, pointing out echoes and references, studying directionality, but also literally studying the um, interactions of the cards when they are laid down in a spread, which is something that, you know, a, a beginner star reader will read card by card, which is absolutely fine. Uh, but a beautiful reading. It's a reading that actually looks at all of the cards um, as if they were telling a story and this story is cohesive. So you have a message that is obviously given by each and every one of those cards, but at the end is a complete story with a beginning, a middle and an end. And this is the book that gave me the possibility to do that. So it's Tarot Interactions by Deborah Lip. Uh, become more intuitive, psychic and skilled at reading cards. I don't know whether um, that would make you more skilled and, and psychic. In my case, it definitely gave me the opportunity to deepen my knowledge in trying to understand the correspondences between the cards and understand how to read them. And just to give you an example, this is quite uh, this is quite good. You see, it, uh, basically, it really also depends on which tarot deck you're using because obviously there's, there will be different figuration depending on which tarot deck you're using. But uh, in this case, I think this the this is the Robin Wood tarot. So this is the uh, Vitruvian Man um, spread. And because the strength card, for example, as you can see here, the, the, the person, the kata on the card is actually looking down because of the particular position of the head. It's looking down in two directions. So it will look at the star reversed and it will look at the knight of cups upright. Okay, so it, this is basically the way in which you can start making connection. Why is the strength looking at the Knight of Cups? Perhaps that's because there's a bit of a um, back and forth in a relationship. Uh, but it's also looking at the star reversed. And we've got the King of Cups, for example, going into this direction and looking straight forward to the uh, Page of Swords. Uh, but we got the sun looking up to the page of swords as well. So uh, these are all, I can assure you that at the beginning, it may feel like it's a bit random in the sense that directionality is not always um, seen as pertaining to the RWS system. I've heard a lot of people that use directionality just exclusively for the TDM, the, the Marseille. I don't think so. I think that there's a reason why certain cards come in a certain way in certain spreads. I think that one tarot deck in specific, and it's the Tarot Z by Alejandro Colucci. That deck, um, I always pay attention to directionality in the spreads because the characters feel like they actually want to get outside of the frame of the card itself. And that tells me a story. So there is a card in particular that I'm thinking about in that um, uh, deck is the death card. Death card is basically barely, it's, it's barely still in the card because it's literally just moving um, at such a fast pace out of the card that it gives you the idea that you need to necessarily, you need to look at what's beside that card, what, what other card is next to it. So, uh, and that's a, a very simple way to look at directionality. That's a very, very simple way to look at our interactions. But I do recommend this book, even though I may not agree on all of uh, the, the things that Deborah talks about in the book, I found it extremely helpful. Uh, if you want to start recognizing these kind of echoes and references and interactions between the cards. Another book that I wanted to talk about this morning that I really recommend is A Tarot by Numbers by Elise Dean. Um, now, this is basically looking at tarot and numerology. If you are new to numerology, this is an excellent book. If you already know about numerology, I do not recommend this book. There are other books that deal with tarot and numerology in a more in-depth way. But if you're not, if you're, if you're a beginner, this is really cool. It's actually really cool. So not only it gives you an idea of the numerology in general, so taking you know in the meaning of number by number, but then it's referring back to 
the um, there's two sections. One is about uh, majors, and one is about minors. And um, uh, it so it refers back it refers back to the tarot cards. Um, it's um, it gives you a lot of examples as you can see in spreads. And it also what I really really like is that when we talk about the minors, for example. Um, it, it takes a particular different meaning depending on which minor you, you're you looking at. So obviously, if you know numerology, you know all about the tools, right? But you don't necessarily know how to apply the concept of numerological energy of the tool in each and every different suit. And so this, this book will definitely help you um, do that. And then at the end, there's a bit of, there's a few tables uh, of interactions between numbers, uh, which is really interesting. It also gives you an idea on how to calculate your birth card, although there are so many different ways to do that. that to be honest, I don't really follow this book when I calculate that for clients. So this is very, very interesting, as I said, when it comes to a beginner kind of um, interest in numerology and associating numerology with tarot. And another book that I really enjoy is the Watkins Tarot Handbook, A Practical System of Self-Discovery. Now, this to me, it's primarily an exercise book. It does have uh, some knowledge that you uh, gather from it. Um, some of it is a bit complex, let's say. And uh, it does touch on a lot of different systems. Therefore, you kind of need to probably um, choose uh, what you want to focus on. Um, but what I really, really appreciate is that there's a lot of tables. And these tables um, help. Well, I'm a visual person. So obviously for me, visualizing something is very important. And uh, these tables actually helped me a lot. And what I was doing, I was just literally doing exercises, creating exercises after studying, for example, these tables by covering, you know, the, um, the different columns in this case and try and trigger my memory and see whether I could remember all of this. And I was doing that for basically each and every one of, um, of these sections. And there's also a lot of questions. So there's a lot of actual exercises here that you can tell, which could be really, really interesting to test your knowledge and see um, what you um, retain out of the uh, studying of this book. It is, I would say that it's definitely uh, a more of an advanced kind of book. This is definitely not an easy book to study. Um, but it is very, very interesting. So this is the Watkins Tarot Handbook. And another book that I never see. Um, I don't know. I, I was a bit concerned that it might have gone out of print because I never see it anywhere. I don't see it on YouTube. I don't see it on Instagram. I don't see it traded on Facebook. And it is kind of an older one. Um, but it is in English. So I... I'm pretty sure I bought it in Australia. But in any case, so this is the um, published by Hachette and it's by Didier Collin, uh, Tarot, Reading the Future. Um, I, don't, I think I don't see this very often because it doesn't look like much. Uh, what I do really, really enjoy about this book is that it's got basically nothing when it comes to description and stuff that you need to study. But all of this, and I mean all of it, up to here is examples and it also has you know you cut out uh, cards if you want these are Marseille um, I left them there because I have a much better Marseille that I can use uh, but other than that so as I said all of this is samples so samples reading so you just look at them for example and uh, you know it gives you the um, so in this case it's current situation it's these two cards You've got death card here and you've got the high priestess. And it tells you how to read these two cards as a current situation in all of these environments. So in when it comes to health, for example, when it comes to a relationship, when it comes to family and community, when it comes to career and projects and work, and when it comes to finance, finances and money. 
and all of the and it's just it goes on and on and on with all of the cards and all of the combination and it's extremely interesting and then after a big section here it also um so basically uh, these two positions were the current situation and these two positions are the probable outcome and so it gives you an idea on how to interpret these cards um, in all of these environments in all of these fields this book um, I just really, really enjoyed it because I was using it to gather knowledge. I was using it to confront myself with what I thought the, you know, the probable outcome was in relationship, for example, was that uh, matching with uh, what the author of this book um, was writing. So it's very, very interesting because of the way in which he gives you all of these different combinations on how to read the cards. And the last book that I want to show you today is so very interesting. It's the, it's also very famous, I think it's the Archetypal Tarot by Mary Kay Greer. Um, she's very, very uh, famous, obviously, and um, the way in which she is looking at and explaining the archetypes related to Deccans as well. So there's a lot of astrology related to uh, the cards here. Um, but what I really, really like is that um, I use this book whenever I do uh, the Wheel of the Year readings for clients. Uh, because as you can imagine, I get clients with different birthdays and obviously I like calculating their birth cards and also their birth cards and also associate that with the, uh, the card of the year. And this will give you an incredibly detailed knowledge about all of the archetypes um, associated with the cards. It also gives you knowledge about the archetypes in the minor arcana, which is very, very interesting, with astrological references. Um, as I said, this book is, um, I think it's a, one of those books that you need to have in your collection. Um, you need to know, you need to learn the knowledge that it provides you, because it's just it, it, it has so much and it doesn't necessarily mean that you will when you study you will remember everything because there's a lot that don't get me wrong this is not an easy book and I feel like every time I reread it I get something more out of it which is always appreciated it's always fantastic so this is the uh, Archetypal Tarot by Mary Kay Greer this was the last book that I wanted to talk about today and thank you so much for staying with me until the end of this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, it really means a lot to me and also I have a very special request if you know of other books that you feel are very important or have been very important in your practice, please mention them in the comments below because I love studying, I love reading and uh, there's only so much research that I can do on tarot books because if you literally google tarot books you'll have something like thousands of results, right? So if I, if you can give me feedbacks on other books that I did not display today, I may not have read them. And so I'll be very, very grateful. So thank you so much in advance. Have a great day.